Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to show you how you can create a very simple shop database. I'm on the home screen and I'm going to select blank database, clicking this once. If you double click it, it just comes straight into it and it will name it whatever this says. So in Access, you need to name the database first not like Word or Excel or, and other programs where you do file save as, etc, etc. You need to name it first. So I'll call this Shop Database. Notice I didn't leave a space. That's helpful for people that want to do programming or formulas and functions when there's no spaces in the database. So that's sort of like the standard thing to do. I'll click on Create. When you click Create, you get given a table, a blank table with just one field this field ID field and then it says click to add and you've got lots of different field types in this list now I don't like to do it like this because basically you would click on that and it would create a column and then click on this and you create a column you would then have to name the column so rather than do that I tend to go into design and create the structure in design so I'm clicking on this little set square symbol which will take me into design. It's asking me to save this table. Now in this database, it's a simple database. I'm just going to do two tables, customers and stock. So if I call this TBL, short for table, customers, and then click OK, it will take me into design. Now it's got the ID field still from before, and I don't want that to be just ID. I want that to say customer ID customer ID and then again there's no spaces now it's got down as data type auto number which is great so that means every time I add a new customer it will give me a new number sequential so that's great and it's got a little key symbol there which means it's a primary key field basically you cannot have duplicates in the primary key field I do want that to be the case so that means I wouldn't be able to ent enter the same customer twice it wouldn't let me do that, the same ID number in EL. Um, it would let you do the same customer if you'd give them a different ID number, which is something else you'd have to look at. So now it's a case of populating these, these field names, which then become the columns, and also going through the data type. Now, what sort of information do you want to capture from your customers is totally up to you. But in this example, I'm just going to do name and address and an email so you can contact them with marketing stuff. So let's go for it. So um, customer name, no spaces. Now when I press tab, before I do that, I just want to put a capital N there so it stands out. When I press tab, it defaults to this type, data type, short text. These are all the different ones. Short text, if you look down the bottom here, gives you 255 characters. So that's more than enough for somebody's name. So is that going to be the first name and uh, second name? I'm just going to leave that as first and second together. So that could be quite long, but it still wouldn't be 255. So you can reduce this. I'll put this down to 100 characters. And then you've got different options here for each of these data types that you select at the top. So whichever one you select will have slightly different options in this list below. So that's customer name. I'll go for customer address. And again, the address field is up to you how you do it. Um, basically, how much detail you want in the address is totally up to you. Now, that's going to be short text as well. And that probably would be OK at 255. If you enter address that's more than 255 characters, it just truncates the end of it. And you'd have to come back here in here and change that to long text which gives you about five pages of data. So it's, it's dependent on how you're doing this address because I'm going to split this address down. That's going to be like 123 Belden Lane. This would be like the city. So customer city. And again, that can be short text. And I'm going to reduce that. By reducing this, you just drop in the actual size of the database down. If you don't, it allocates 255 characters, whether you use them or not. So we've got, I'll just put postcode 
I didn't need to put customer in each of those. That's just going to be short text as well, and that's going to be well down. So I'll just do 50 characters. Postcode, and then email. Just going to leave that as short text for email. You could have it as a hyperlink. It's to, it's it's up to you if you want that to show as a hyperlink. Well, for this example, I will do. I'll put it as a hyperlink. And then the last thing I want to do is date of sale. For example, I want that in there, and that's going to be a date time. So I've pressed tab. I'm pressing D for date time. And then you get the option down here to format this and input mask. One of the problems you get with databases, not just in Access, other databases and, and in Excel, is people type dates in any which way they fancy. So I'm going to force people to enter a date in the way I want it. So I've clicked on these three ellipses. Yes, I'll save the table. And I want it in this format, short date. And if you click down there, People cannot type August, for example, in there. It's no space for it. It won't allow it. It comes up with an error message. So it's got to be in that format. And I can just finish there. And it puts some little codes in here for you. That basically tells you the zero means you have to have an entry. Uh, as opposed to a nine, which means it would be optional. So in this example, you couldn't put one. You'd have to put zero one for the first. It would let you do that. And then zero one for January. But that's OK. I'm happy with that. And, and I'm happy with this table as it is, so I'm going to click on save and then I can have a look at this table. So those are the customer's details that I've populated, the fields, the headings. What I need to do now is add some data. So if I just widen these a little bit so you can see the actual information, so everything else is OK. So if I put myself in there first off, Steve Saxton, when you press tab, you move across one red road, city, Leeds, and postcode LE12RT, email steve at itseasy.co.uk, tab, date of sale today, control, semicolon, puts today's date in, in access under Excel, and project tab off comes to the next record see it automatically give me a number one and there's the details there's the hyperlink so that would um, allow me to click on that if I click on it let's see what happens so it opened up the outlooks so ready for me to send an email to that person so I'll just close that down nope so we're back to this so that's quite cool now, I just need to fill a few more records in for customers. Let's, let's do that. So I've just added a few extra people, and you can see that it's all populating nicely there. Now, in Access, if I just widen this, you do not need to save the data input. So I don't need to save the fact that I've just typed these six records. When I close this table, it will ask me to save, but what it's asking me to save is the layout changes. So if I make a column wide like that, it's asking me to save that. So if I just show you that, close. Do you want to save the changes to the layout of the table, not the data input that automatically saves, which is a bit different to Excel and Word and other programs. So I'll say yes to that. And then when I open that table again, you can see that it's, it's saved that change. So if I close this table, in fact, I'll add another record. I'll put, I'll put um, Janet Carr to Red Road. It's the same address as that. I better put it somewhere else. Um, Halifax H A one two D F. Let's say she doesn't have an email. She's joined today or she sold, bought something today. So I've just added extra information. Now, if I close that, it didn't ask me to save it because I didn't make a change to the layout. And if I go back into it, you can see it's still got Janet Carr there at the bottom. So you're only saving changes to layout that you make. So I'll close that. So that's a customer's table. Now I need to create a second table for stock. What am I actually selling in my shop? So up at the top here on the ribbon, you've got create and then you've got tables. So this is called 
um, an access object and the view that we've got here are all objects so you've got tables which we're doing now and then queries queries are used to interrogate the tables which you'll see in a later session and then forms have got two uses one as an input mechanism to a table or query or as a navigational tool to navigate around a larger database and then you've got reports which is the output so a report in this case could be an invoice to somebody or it could be um, a sales receipt or whatever you want it to be and then this last section this last object is macros which are automated processes which we'll, again I'll do in a later session so now let's create a second table so we've got create up here table which is how it was initially when we first started off and then this one straight into design so straight into design so first thing I need is a primary key stock ID I shall call it and I want that to be an auto number as well so I'll just type a there and then I need to click on this primary key symbol so it becomes a unique ID and then we've got item stock item that just needs to be text now this is 255 I'm going to leave that as default because you never know sometimes the descriptions of items can be quite long highly like they'll be 255 but I am going to leave that stock item and then let's have quantity stock quantity that can be text as well or if I'm going to use any sums on that you know I might want to put that as a number it's I've got um, currency to do I'll do the value in a minute price but you've got I'll put that on a, as a number and then you can do calculations on it so then I'll go price per item and then that'll be currency so I'll just type C there price per item now if you create your little database tables and then you realize later on that you've forgotten something you can always come back into this and add that field best do that fairly soon though as soon as you realize because if you've then built other things on top of these tables everything looks at the table if you've created a form or a report that's looking at a table and you change the complete structure of that table that the forms looking at the form will need changing because it won't be looking at the correct structure so just be careful to try and plan out the sort of information that you want so stock item quantity price that's all I need for this I think so let's just save this table and then just do TBL stock and then OK and then already I've remembered something so if I want to use customers if I want a customer to buy an item what I need in this table is customer ID so I can link these two together so I will put that in here customer this is called a foreign field customer ID it is a number field so in this table it's an auto number field in this table it needs to be the same data type if you're going to use it to join things together so now I'll save that again and just have a look at these so there I've got some default figures there quantity zero price zero customer ID zero now if I go back into design the reason that's coming up is because it says so there default value you've got default value if I wanted to I could put default values in this customers table for cities for example let's say most of your customers was in a particular city there the default value I could put say leads and then every new record would be leads and if it wasn't leads you just change it but if majority of things are that you could do that let's come back into this out of there and let's have a look let's put some stuff in this some stock what are we actually selling or what have we got in stock before we open up the doors so I'll just save that again and I'll fill some things in so let's say we're a bakery and we're selling bakery bits and bobs so let's go for bread buns bread buns uh, quantity six price one pound say and what we've got here look is a bit of an issue with who is buying this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into design and just get rid of that field for a minute so I don't want that because what I need to do is create a sales table and we'll have a sales table which will 
these two together. Okay, so it's letting me delete that. I'll have to save it and then I can fill in the rest of the stock. So there's a stock. So bread buns, I can have pies. So I'll have a meat pie. Um, so I've got 25 of those in stock and they are 50p each, which is highly unlikely, but there you go. And I'll just fill some other stock items in here. So I've just added a few items there. So that's got some figures there. There's no VAT or anything like that on uh, small shop sales. So that's okay. I don't need to do a calculation field, although there is an option to do calculations at the table level if you so wish. But I'm just going to close that now. So I've got customers and I've got a stock. Now what I want is a sales table. And in the sales table, I need to have items from each of these tables. So I've create a new table, call it sales, so table design. And then I want this one to have sales ID. And that's going to be auto number. And then I'll need customer ID. So I can join it to the customer table. And that's going to be number. And I need stock ID. Stock ID number again so I can join it to the the stock table and I'll have quantity which will be a number field and then what I want to do on the customer ID field and the stock ID field is create a lookup or make this to be a lookup so if I go down here there's two ways of doing this you can go down to this lookup tab and do it yourself or you can use the wizard, which is one of the options in this list, which I think is probably better. Look up wizards. So I want to look up a field to get the value from another table. Yep, I do. Uh, this is a customer. Yep, customer. So fields, right. I want customer name. And let's go for email. Let's, I just want that. And I can change this later if I don't, if I don't like that. It's okay. So that's what it's going to show me, customer name and email, and it's got the it's got the key hidden, so that's great. So it's going to show me this information, and then I just go next, and it asks me, I just need this just needs to say customer now, customer, and then if I tick this option, it's gonna it's gonna stop me creating a customer in here that doesn't exist. So that's a, a good option. Now you can also do this in database tools, which I'll show you later on, but by doing this lookup wizard, it gives you a good option there. All right, so you've got these two options as well, cascade, delete, cascade, uh, restrict, delete. I'm gonna leave it on restrict, delete, but basically if you delete a customer out of this table, it'll delete all the sales, so it's dangerous. So I'm not gonna let that happen. So I don't want everything to get deleted if you delete a customer, because then it'll, Mess up my sales, so I'll click finish on that. Yep, so table is going to be sales TBL sales. Okay, and then I need to do this for um, I need to do the same for the stock ID. So it's wanting a primary key, which is going to be this one. So if I'd have said yes to that little box there, it would have created another field with a primary key on it, which I didn't want it to do that. So, um this one doesn't need to say stock ID, it just needs to say stock. Let's go and do the same thing on that one. So we're going for look at wizard, leave it on that option. Next. So now I'm looking up stock and I want the stock item and price per item. I don't need the quantity because we'll use the quantity in this sales table. Next, next. So it's show me that next and then that'll do same thing tick that finish yes save table oh yeah now if i close this and open the stock table you can see all the stock there now if i go to the sales table it hasn't got any th information in there but if i click on there you've got the drop down arrow with the people and then you've got the stock and then you can put how many items the person bought so this then this then becomes a, a joined in table of these two other two and if i close that down for a second and go to database tools 
and click on relationships you can see that that has been created by my, me doing those two lookups it has automatically created this relationship so one customer can have many sales one to many and one item of stock can be sold many times so that's this sales table is a joining table of these two and that's exactly what i would have done if i'd have, if i'd have come into here first before doing the lookups so i'll just close that off everything's good so that's all I want you to cover in this little session. On the next session, we'll build this up a little bit more. But hopefully this, so far, this has been of use. Thank you for your time. I'll catch you in the next one.